Hello, welcome to this brief demonstration of Latin tree banking by way of introduction to a two-day workshop sponsored by the Perseids Project on grammatical tree bank analysis for teaching and research that's going to be held in Toronto on the 4th and 5th of January at the Weston Harbor Hotel. My name is Vanessa Gorman. I'm from the University of Nebraska at Lincoln. With me will be Bob Gorman, also of Nebraska, Marie Claire Bolu of Tufts, and Tim Buckingham of the Perseids Project. In this video, I'm going to give you a brief tour of Arethuso, which is this wonderful software developed at Perseids in order to construct grammatical trees of texts in various languages, especially Latin and Greek. I'm going to show you the mechanics of this free program. It's easy to learn, it's easy to use, and yet it allows for sophisticated representations of complex language structures. You begin by opening either Firefox or Chrome and going to the Perseids login page. Anyone can log in with a, an account from Gmail, Yahoo, AOL, or Twitter. And when you log in, as I'm doing here, you'll wind up on your personal dashboard. The first time you log in, it will be pretty empty. Mine has lots of things because I've already done a lot of trees. You'll go to the new tree bank annotation button, click on that, and here's where you can import text in Greek or Latin or other languages. You can cut and paste sentences into the input box, which is a really great way if you want to import sentences from your textbook or some other odd source. You can search for a text. Um, the available works are pretty extensive. Um, so here's Latin, for example, all set up for you. Um, converted and ready to go. Or you can, if, not, if it's not already converted, you can go to Perseus and get the text URI and import it that way, which is a little klutzier. I'm going to just import a text that's already converted. I'm looking for Caesar, so I'm just going to start typing Caesar. And there his Gallic Wars come up. So if I click on Gallic Wars, I just want a few sentences to play with. So I'm going to say from book 1-1 one, one to book 1-2. Retrieve the passage. It will come into the text box and then I click edit. Now I've already done this so I don't need to do it again. But if you click edit, it will take you right into a list of sentences. Um, I'm going to go back to my, so there's, there's the file that will be created and it will then appear on your desktop. If you go inside that file, you'll see the computer has divided everything into sentences already. In this case, there's 19 in the first two chapters here. And then if you click on any given sentence, you'll get a box that looks like this. Now let's look at what we've got here in Arethusa. We've got the text that we just called up. We have the sentence number within that text, and I can navigate through by just typing in the sentence number or go to the beginning or the end. Um, there's a save button here, there's an undo button here, there's a settings button, help button, some other things. Notice that the first thing you see is that the words are color coded. That's because we have a preliminary morphological analysis that the computer has done. So for example, in colant is the third plural present indicative active a verb from in colo. Um, you can turn this feature off if you want to so that your students have to provide all this information. But for me doing research, it's a very convenient feature. Um, for example, if I click on DeWissa, we see we have lots and lots and lots of choices. Um, clearly, we want a feminine nominative. Here we go, DeWito. If we go back to the sentence box, I can click escape to unselect a word at any time. Um, making the actual tree is as easy as clicking and clicking. It is not dragging and dropping, but you click on the word and you click where you want to hang it and there it goes. Now we always hang from the main verb. 
So dewisa is hung on the root. Est as the auxiliary verb is hung on the dewisa. These rules are all in the guidelines that we have provided links to and that we'll be going over in depth in the workshop. It's, they're not too complicated as a rule. Um, you can teach them to students very quickly. The subject galia hangs on the verb as well. All gall, so omnis modifies gall, so we're going to hang that on galia. And then in partes trace, trace into partes, and partes is the object of the preposition, which also hangs on the verb. So there's your main clause. I'm not going to try to do the whole rest of the sentence right now in the interest of time, but you see the basics here. Now, look what we can do next. We have various tabs here. We've already looked at the morphology tag. There's also a relationship tag. We're going to be labeling a number of things here. We've got the morphology of the word. We now have different words that they're dependent upon, and now we're going to re label the relationships between these words. Now, in this um, normal default setting, we use something called the prog tag set. Now, if you look over here, you see there's a fairly limited number of tags you can put on a word. Predicate, subject, object, attribute, you know, etc. There's a few auxiliary ones, um, aux p for prepositions, aux c for conjunctions, etc. Not very many. Um, now, this tag set is very flexible. You can load, for example, there's been a tag set made by Bob for Wheelock, and it's much more detailed, and it has all the different uses of the different cases and things like that. Um, Giuseppe Salino has developed a Smythe tab tag set for Greek, which is also extraordinarily detailed. I use the prog tag set when I do research because um, it's used internationally, it's simple, um, and it gives us a way to compare apples and oranges, so to speak. So if I'm going to label this word, I start with the wissa, which is my main verb, which should be labeled as a predicate. Now I can label it either by coming over to this right-hand box and coming down and clicking predicate. Now you see it's labeled, and then hitting escape to, to deselect it. Another way I can label it is simply by right-clicking on the word, and then I have the same box. Now in this case, est is the auxiliary verb, which is aux v, and then again click outside the box and it's done. The preposition also, I can do the same way, aux p for preposition, and it's done. Um, the subject is gall, partes is an adverb in this case, and then both trace and omnis are attributes, and here's where I can select several things at once. I can click on omnis and then control click on trace. I've got both of them here, and I can label them both at the same time, which is incredibly time an incredible time saver when you have a lot of words there in a complex sentence. Um, similarly, for example, you can use the selector tab um, and search for, for example, all the prepositions at once. Now, if this were a long sentence, there might be five or six or eight prepositions, and then you can go back and label them all at once. Nice, nice feature. Um, if you need to supply a word that's elided, the AT tab allows you to do this. You can just put in a blank node. So for example, if I needed to supply a word here, I could just add a token and there's a blank node. Um, I could likewise um, type in a word if I know exactly what the word is, and then I can hang that on the tree as well. I need to make sure each of these words is labeled correctly. Just as we did for DeWissa, we went to the morphology. If you use the W and E keys, you go back and forth between words. Um, if I start, est is correctly identified. Omnis is not masculine accusative. Of course, we need to take it down to feminine acute, sorry, feminine nominative. There it is. Click on that. DeWissa we've done. In is the preposition partes, feminine accusative, trace, feminine accusative. We're good there. Now, notice Galia is black. A lot of proper nouns aren't in the dictionary, but you can create a new form. So Galia is actually a noun. It's a singular feminine 
nominative, save the form, and now that will be saved on your computer until you clear your caches, and you won't have to keep retyping this all in. Let's save this sentence, which is the red button up here. So you save that, and it says saving, and then document saved. Now you're good. Let's go look at the code behind this now. If I click on this top right button, it takes us back to the sentence list, and then I can look at the edit XML code. If you go in here, you have yourself the XML code for this sentence. It begins with a lot of preliminary coding, which identifies the annotator and does a lot of things that don't really matter for the users as a whole. It also provides unique identifiers for the author and work, each sentence, and each word within the sentence. So here, for example, is sentence one. And you can see there's a lot of information preserved here. We have the form that as it appears in the sentence. We have the lemma. We have what's called a part of speech tag or the post tag, which tells me it is a nominative singular, sorry, a noun, singular feminine nominative, right? The wissa, we have coding for all the different forms. In is a preposition, which is coded with R, um, etc. We have the relation, it's serving as the subject of the sentence, and what word it hangs on. So this is giving us a lot of information that we can use as the basis of research projects. This is also an opportunity to edit the sentence if, for example, it's scanned and two words were stuck together as one and you need to separate them, or in Greek a Yoda subscript drops out and you need to add it back in, or something like that. You can fix the, the sentence here, and then you do a summary of what you've just changed and hit the save button. And then versioning software keeps all of this so you never lose what you've done in the past. Now I'm going to go back to my edit um, and look at a few other things in here. Um, if I click on, let's say, the est, you see these buttons here. You get slightly different views with these buttons. You can compact the tree. You can spread out the tree. You can switch the direction of the tree. Um, you can focus on the root or focus on the word that you have selected um, or just center the tree or stretch it to fit the whole space. If you use the scroll ball bar on your mouse, it gets bigger or smaller, which can be really useful. Um, Another thing that's very helpful is this highlight unused. So if you're trying to figure out what you haven't hung yet, you, you click on that and you'll see we, there's a lot of this sentence that we have not yet hung. Um, that toggles on and off. Likewise, when you're um, doing the morphology, this will give you a toggle of what hasn't been morphologically analyzed yet either. I don't want to go on for great length, but let me show you a few other sentences that I've already done. You can see that you can add a coordinating um, parts of the sentence. Here, here we have three adverbs that are coordinated, and the coordinator is a comma, as often happens in Latin. Um, you can see the same thing here. We have coordinated predicates. In this case, however, the second predicate needs to be expressed. Um, we have to wit it once, but not for the first part of the sentence. And so I've added it using the AT tab. Um, and so you see there's the list. And you see it's smaller so that you can hang it, but you also know that it's been added in. Um, this tree bank uh, tool can be used for quite large sentences. I've done sentences up to 100 and 30 or 40 words in Greek um, that can get very complex, but they're also not that hard to learn. This is the whole point. You can learn these within an hour or two, and then it's just a matter of perfecting it. They're as simple as what we've seen here, but they're also as complex as language is complex. It's easy to learn this tool. It's free to use this tool. Just to sum up, we're going to be teaching you how to make these trees and giving you a lot of supervised time to work on your own and help you answer your questions. Um, we're going to show you ways that um, Bob especially uses them in the classroom, both in beginning Latin classes and in advanced classes. 
And Bob and I will talk about how we're using these trees in our own research, answering questions of author attribution in Greek prose. This is a very flexible tool, very adaptable to many different circumstances, and we think it's a very effective tool both in the classroom and in research, allowing us to approach old questions in imaginative new ways. I hope you will join us at this workshop in Toronto, and there's a couple of more videos you can watch by Bob about um, more details about the teaching and the research. So I hope we see you in Toronto. Please sign up um, and let us know if you have any questions. Thank you very much.